Some of you will remember that a little while ago I printed out all this lot and then they've basically just been sitting in a box waiting for me to put them together ever since. So let's get these bits together and make them do something. Right from the start, I want to say that this isn't my original design. It was created by a guy called Fooable, and if you want to download and make your own, you can get the files from Thingiverse. This video is mostly just an assembly guide because I just think this is a really cool and fun tool for filmmakers and time-lapse shooters. But I have modified a couple of pieces, which I did during a live stream that's linked up there in the corner, and those files are now available to download on Thingiverse too. And if you watched that Fusion 360 live stream or saw the Area 1 PLA Plus review, you'll know that I already built one of these gimbals. This one, which was printed using regular PLA. For this one, I used a mixture of some red EDA filament that I wanted to get used up, along with the rest of the roll of Snapmaker Black PLA that came with the Snapmaker 2. Regular PLA isn't ideal for something like this. It works, but it tends to be quite brittle and it can grind away on things like these little gears on the motors but I wanted to see how everything went together and if I'd need to modify any parts to make it better fit my needs. And I did need to modify a couple of pieces, as I mentioned. Specifically, this big 160 tooth gear that sits on this side and this arm that the camera mounts to. And I'll explain why I modified them when we get to assembling those bits. But here are all the parts laid out and you can see I've gone with the same colors I used for the original, black and red. This was kind of an accidental color scheme I planned to make the whole thing in black, but then I ran out of black filament partway through printing and found a red roll that I needed to finish off. I really like the look though, so that's why I decided to go with it again when I reprinted all these parts in PLA+. One thing to note is that you may not need to print every STL that's in Fooables download. I did print everything, but ended up with a few bits left over that didn't really seem to serve much of a purpose. But let's start off with the assembly here. This is the main base. And on top of this goes the 128 tooth gear. Holding these together is a 10 millimeter rod and I've got a steel one here. Fooable suggests aluminium, but for me it turned out to be more expensive than, than, than getting steel. So I just got a 250 mil steel rod, 10 millimeters outer diameter, eight millimeters inner diameter, and cut it down to about 75 millimeters. This basically just pushes straight through the hole in the center of the cog which is a nice snug fit and then pushes down into the base and you can see there's a hole right there so we want to push that down it doesn't need to go all the way in at this point right now we just need to line up these three holes with these three holes in the base once they are positioned you need to use three countersunk m3 screws to hold the 128 tooth gear down onto the base i don't normally keep a stock of countersunk m3 screws so i hit up amazon and i bought a little variety pack box of them with a whole bunch of different lengths and we're gonna go here with these 12 millimeter ones and we need three you'll notice that there's no captive nuts or heat inserts on this it's, it's basically screwing it straight into the plastic which it isn't ideal but this one's held really well and i'm gonna move that out of the way because i need to find allen key but this lack of captive nuts or heat inserts is, is pretty consistent throughout the entire build most of them you're basically just threading the plastic i mean it, it holds pretty well but it does mean that you're not going to want to keep assembling and disassembling this because eventually you will just wear the threads away so once you've put it together that's it you're stuck with it so there is one thing that I wanted to add here, but I haven't printed it out. I've got one on here, <laughs> but I can't easily show you. Well, yes, I can. So let's pull this out and see I printed a little red washer. This is to basically prevent the gimbal from riding straight on the flat surface because when they're, they're both tight together, these two surfaces rub against each other. So this little washer basically sits above a bearing or below a bearing to keep this raised up off the base so that when your your two arms are spinning around they're not rubbing against this these are actually the next bit we're going to assemble this is part of the pan axis assembly 
and we have these as well and these do go a specific way around i'll show you how to figure out which way around these go in a minute but this goes on here that goes on there and i need another hand so this is the panix pan axis and this sits on there and spins that way as i said these only go in one way and you'll notice if we put them that way the edge doesn't line up you can see that this sits proud of this and if we put the other side in you can see there that we can see the red this sits shy of this but if we swap them over that is then perfectly level with that edge and that is then perfectly level with that edge so you know you've got them the right way around but there's no bolts or screws on this it's all glue basically you have these two pieces that sandwich everything together you've got one two arm pieces and then you have these which are little sheaths for these bearings and what we're going to do is we're going to epoxy all these together but in order to do that i'm going to remove this out of here one of the problems that you face not necessarily with this but with a lot of printed parts when you when you try to glue multiple parts together is that things like holes that need to be straight will often end up being slightly out of alignment so what we're going to do is we're going to put the bearings on the steel rod and glue it all together assembled and then these will sit in here so this is why i wanted to glue them all together assembled to make sure that these holes line up properly so that this spins freely inside the bearing we'll get all this stuff out of the way we'll get the uh, the silica mat out and the gorilla glue so there's also this other little bit that we need to epoxy onto here and i'll go through what that is in a minute so let's mix up some of this epoxy you'll notice that i'm going to use quite a lot of epoxy on these but not much on the bushings on the bearings because these are all structural but these i just don't want them to spin so what we'll do is we'll mix this up here and you'll see that there's pins here and holes in these to, to help with alignment and make sure everything's where it's supposed to be. And on here, I'm just going to put the teeniest, tiniest little bit just to hold it because what you don't want to do is get the bearings epoxied to themselves so that they no longer spin. I'm trying to work quick because there's a lot to glue and this stuff it's called five minute epoxy it isn't hard in five minutes but it's definitely starting to set up within five minutes it says it's good in half an hour but uh yeah i'm, I'm just going to clamp this up and we'll leave it overnight but i want to clamp it up while the glue's still kind of you know gluey now i have my appropriately sized clamps and one in that side and yeah, there is quite a bit of squeeze out, but uh, we'll get rid of all that tomorrow. Now there is one other bit that I need to epoxy. This is the bar that the camera mounts to. And on this side, we have this little nub here. And, and this is, whoops, this is how it rotates. And then this one, we'll just use a spring clamp. So that's it. Right, we'll, uh, we'll leave those now till the morning. And I'll see you tomorrow. It's the next morning and the epoxy is all set. So let's get these clamps off. See how much we've got to clean up. There's a little bit of squeeze out, but I think we can scrape it off just fine. You can see we have got a little bit of squeeze out there and on the back but that's no problem. The trick with the epoxy, even though it's supposedly five minutes, it doesn't take five minutes to set. It takes significantly longer than that. But if you catch it at just the right time, it's still soft enough that you can clean it off with a knife. So that's what we're gonna do. At some point while shooting this video, the audio decided it wasn't going to record anymore. So I'm having to do a separate voice over here to explain more about what's going on. With the epoxy trimmed and cleaned up, you can see that we have a decent looking final pan assembly. And because we put it together with the steel rod in place, you can see that it easily spins around the bearings as it's supposed to. 
Next up is the tilt arm, which has also dried fine overnight with no squeeze out, so there's nothing to clean up. But why did I redesign the tilt arm? On Fuable's original design, there's a tripod mounting plate to let you attach your camera. The only problem is whatever tripod plate Fuable's using doesn't seem to be any kind of Manfrotto or Arca Swiss compatible standard plate that I've ever seen. When I try to use an Arca Swiss plate in here and lock it down, it still slides around pretty freely, so I designed a new arm to provide a couple of mounting holes for this Arca Swiss compatible tripod plate clamp. This will provide a good strong hold on whatever camera we want to put on top of it. The Arca Swiss clamp that I'm using has a number of 3 8 16 and quarter 20 threaded holes underneath to provide a bunch of different mounting options. For this, I'm going to use a couple of the quarter 20 holes with a couple of quarter 20 by 7 8 inch countersunk bolts that just pass right through the holes in the arm and into the plate. The other part I redesigned was this big 160 tooth cog. The original design uses a proximity sensor to home and zero out the tilt axis, but as I know I'll never want to tilt the camera outside of a certain range, I decided to go with a mechanical end stop switch and I need mounting holes for that. The cog mounts to the arm using a couple of countersunk 16mm M3 bolts. And I'm not going to attach the end stop to this just yet because I want to make sure the code all works before I risk killing anything. But now that the tilt arm assembly is assembled, you can see why we had to epoxy that one bit onto the other side of the arm. It lines up with a similar protrusion built into the 160 tooth gear on the other side, and this is the axis around which the tilt arm rotates. Now we just need to attach the tilt arm to the pan assembly using the two side supports and then mount the whole thing to the base. Alrighty, we're returning back to recording while I'm actually filming now. I don't know when the audio cut out, but I will have no doubt applied a suitable voiceover to go with some of the footage that I shot. But now that these are basically both together, it's time to put these arms together. And there are two of these. And basically we have a, a 6000 series bearing with a sleeve. And then that whole thing just slots into here and screws down with four 10 millimeter M3 countersunk screws. And I'm not putting these in all the way just yet because I want to mount them to the sides and get the arm in while there's still a little bit of wiggle room in these bearings. So the bearings, here's the other arm that I already did. And there is a specific way around that these go. This one with the four screws goes this way so that we can mount the motor to it, which drives that great big cog and that goes on this side and we know it goes on this side because here's where we mount the other motor to drive the pan but what we'll do is we'll hold that on and you can see I'm, I'm putting this in the hole as I'm driving that in and then you can see how the whole thing swings and pivots so to hold these side pieces on here, you can epoxy those on too, but there isn't really much of a need. It comes with these 3D printed split tubes that you can get, and there are two short ones and two long ones. And the two short ones go in this top bit and just push all the way through. Let me show you, There's, you see there's holes in the arms and then it caps off at the other side. This pushes through all the way. The long one in the bottom and I'm not putting them in all the way yet just because I want to make sure that I've got these on the right sides and that holds that in and it swings nice and freely but now that I know they fit I'm going to push those in all the way because I don't plan to ever take these out again and now those arms are both nice and stiff but with that in place I'm going to screw these in the rest of the way so now they're only tight and this thing still swings freely very freely and now we're on to the fun stuff and that is setting up the motors and the electronics now i'm using a couple of nema 17 motors here you could potentially go with the slimmer pancake steppers and i might swap these out eventually but for now this is what i've got now the plans for this gimbal do come with a couple of little 3d printed spur gears for the stepper motors which you can see i used on the pla version there and under there but these gears probably see the most use of any component on a gimbal like this and suffer from the most wear and tear so this time around i picked up a couple of metal spur gears to go on the motors now these are m1 t16 and i got these from aliexpress but we'll start with the tilt motor which is 
the one that goes on here. So this is the bracket for it and we need to attach the motor to it before we put it on the frame because once it's on you can't access this mounting screw. So we'll put the motor on here and we'll do this using some tiny little M3 four millimeter screws. And now with those attached, we're gonna attach it to here. And again, we're gonna use M3 screws. Now these aren't countersunk, so we're gonna use some regular M3 screws for this. So we're gonna be attaching the motor mount to the gimbal using 10 millimeter M3 screws. But before we attach this, we're gonna put one of the spur gears on here. Now this one goes this way around so that once it's mounted on, the two cogs line up with each other. Now, this is definitely a tighter fit than with the plastic gear. You'll see on this one that it tilts quite easily and freely. With this one, whatever position you set it at, it's, it's probably gonna hold it pretty well, at least for a while until the gears had a chance to mesh properly with that big 160 tooth cog but this is definitely a tighter fit so the second motor to be mounted on is the pan motor and that goes in this mount and you'll see here there's a hole this is for an induction sensor to go through which i'm not gonna fit just yet but if you are using the induction sensor you'll want to screw this onto the base here and then a little m3 screw goes through that hole so that as the induction sensor passes across it it detects the metal and it knows where that position is and this motor mounts on upside down but we can mount this first and then add the motor with four more 10 millimeter m3 screws the motor mounts underneath with four more tiny six millimeter countersunk m3 screws now this time the little metal spur gear that we're going to put on mounts the other way up with the teeth closer to the base and then that all just slots onto here you see the base actually spins quite freely but this one's still pretty stiff but i expect as this motor starts wearing this round it'll grind away at the big cog enough to run freely so that's pretty much it for now i had intended to try and do all this in one video but it's uh this video's turned out to be much longer than i expected it to be so we're gonna do part two for the electronics and the software so that's it for now if you like this video give it a thumbs up share it subscribe and hit the bell if you want to be notified when new videos come up including part two for this where we wire up all the electronics, install all the software, start telling it what to do and go shoot some video with it. If you have any questions about this gimbal or any suggestions you want to put forward for ways this can be modified or extended in the future because I still have some work I want to do on this to extend Fubal's original design, let me know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.